for project 130, we will remove this two snap wire. And now the red and green LEDs will be blinking while the blue ones stay on continuously. For 131, red blue blinking fine, I will move this double snap wire over to the center. And they should blink, yeah. Now the red and blue LEDs blink and only the green ones stay on continuously. And lastly for project 132, green blue blinking fine, I am going to move the remaining double snap wire over to the left. And now only the red LEDs stay on continuously. Project 133, button ball. Now for this circuit, you will need a ping pong ball or a ball of a similar size. Unfortunately, I can't find a ping pong ball right now. So I am going to use this metal ball from a magnet rod set. And I don't recommend using a heavy metal ball like this because you might damage your parts, but I may use it just to demonstrate the principle of this circuit you'll see that this circuit includes the white LED mounted in an overhead position, in an inverted position, and the press switch. Now note that the press switch does not actually do anything. It's just to support the vertical snap wires that hold the white LED up. I'm going to turn on the slide switch and the white LED will come on. We have the phototransistor below and Turn down your volume because there is a horn in this project, but the objective is that you're supposed to throw the ball into the area underneath the white LED or drop it through the space in between the white LED and press switch. I'm just going to toss it very lightly. I don't recommend this, but... What's supposed to happen, though, is that if the ball is big enough, it's going to block light to the phototransistor and cause the color LED and horn to go off. It's that simple. 134, whole ball. We'll modify the previous circuit by removing the press switch and sliding the two vertical snap wires holding the white LED downward. Here's the diagram. So you can tell the difference between 133 and 134. And now we will try throw the ping pong ball through the opening right here between the vertical wires. I'm gonna try the, more, the metal ball again. Let's see what happens. Turn down your volume please in case it gets loud. Nope. If you reach in that area, the horn and color LED will come on. Project 135, whole ball with light tunnel. We can enhance the performance of the previous two circuits by, by including the light tunnel and turning on the slide switch. The white LED comes on now please turn down your volume. I'm going to reach into this area to demonstrate. And not only does the horn come on, but the light tunnel also does a show. It should flash in a little bit. Yep. Project 136, check the light tunnel. This project is referenced by the advanced troubleshooting page, and you can use it to make sure that the light tunnel is working correctly. We have both switches, and we will 
push the press switch, and all three sets of LEDs, nine in total, should be, should come on at once and stay on continuously. Now release the press switch and turn on the slide switch. The LEDs should now perform a show. They should all flash at once. By performing these simple tests, you can verify that the light tunnel is working correctly. The advanced trouble shooting page is the advanced troubleshooting section can be found on page 10. And for the light tunnel, you would use Project 136 to test it. Project 137, high wind alarm. You will need a small piece of paper right here, and we will insert it between these two snap wires mounted freely on this single vertical snap. The paper has to be hanging by the top, and it has to be right in between the white LED and photo transistor, which has the Q4 attachment over it. Now I'm going to turn this circuit on. Now turn down your volume because the horn might come on, even though it's not really supposed to when it first when you first switch it on. All right, that's good. It didn't come on, but still keep your volume down. Now just adjust it so that the paper blocks light to the phototransistor, yet you, when you blow on it, it will allow the light to reach it. Here we go. There we go. When I blow on the piece of paper, the light can reach the phototransistor and trigger an alarm. So this could be a good wind detector. You could place a circuit outside, keep it free from the elements, but if you place it in an area that receives a frequent, am frequent amount of wind, an alarm could sound if the paper blows hard enough. Once again, you need to adjust it so that it can flex easily and allow light to reach the phototransistor and sound the alarm. 138, hit the two snap. We will modify the preceding circuit by removing uh, one of the two two snap wires mounted on this vertical snap here and move it down to the center level of the vertical snap and have it so it is just blocking the light to the phototransistor from the white LED. Now, you can pretend that this is a carnival game and you could use a vertical stabilizer in this kit and throw it at the two snap wire. Throw it gently and the two snap wire is its target. Watch what happens when I throw it at the two snap wire. Oops. I may not knock it off, but if I am able to move it just enough, the white alley, the horn will sound because the light will now reach the phototransistor. And then you can reset the circuit by moving the two snap wire back into place between the white LED and phototransistor. Project 139, free mirror circuit. Turning on the slide switch, the white LED will come on but nothing else will happen. Now we're going to take a mirror, one of the mirrors, and hold it just the right angle over the phototransistor while it is in front of the white LED. Volume warning. And when the light from the white LED is reflected at just the right angle, the phototransistor will allow the horn to sound. Now the color LED is installed backwards and it will not come on. It is just acting like an, a small electric speed bump, which will regulate voltage to the MPN transistor to keep surrounding room lights from 
triggering the alarm easily. The micro circuit inside the color LED is what regulates the current. 